seriously. Ever since you joined us, you've been nothing but selfish and unhealthy. Oh no! Don't you talk to me about being selfish. This was so long ago. Are they gonna fight again? The runaway. What is going on? You betrayed me! I had no choice. What? The obvious idea is that there's conflict between them. My second thought is immediately that it's a ploy. Like, the intentional capture. Oh, we get a... We get a little battle. Okay, I'm ready for some training. Oh, training. Maybe you should take your own advice, Tom. No. Can't handle some dirt, madam fussy britches. <laughs> that escalated quickly. What are we gonna get with our last silver piece? We can get more money right there. Can she cheat? Sorry, little lady, but... Huh? I won! <laughs> Got him. Where did you guys get the money to buy all this stuff? He scammed one of those guys in town who moves <laughs> the shells around all sneaky-like. So honest. This isn't something we should make a habit of doing. I'll personally make you an avatar promise that we won't make a habit of doing these scams. I mean, it's no different from real life. Like, all those carnival games are scams. <laughs> awesome. Good. I'm glad. Oh no, they're like really scamming now. They crossed the line. What? That just, that's a whole other thing. Accident scams? That's not good. Next they're going to be doing email scams. And after that it's going to be Ponzi schemes. Guys, I think these scams have gone far enough. <laughs> yeah, alright. Initially my defense was up against what Guitar was saying earlier, but she's right. Like, what are you doing? You for once stop being such a sourpuss and just lighten up? Oh, she's paying her off. Maybe then you'd see how great we have it. I mean, look at us. We're traveling around the world, making easy money, having fun. You're acting like this because of your parents. You just feel guilty. Oh, I definitely don't agree with the scamming they're doing. But in terms of the disposition, the, the outlook that Top described, I kind of agree with that. It is nice to look at the bright side of things, and they are having a great adventure. How many people have their days filled with this much purpose? How many people have their days filled with this much friendship and camaraderie? How many people have their days filled with such amazing, eye-opening experiences and growth, etc., you know? Being sour about things and bringing down the mood, it seems to me like that's partly based on fear. It's fear of losing it. It's like, if we go too far, something bad will happen. It's a weird thing that people get worried when things are good. You start to think, well, I could lose everything in a moment. And there is something very real about that as well, because if you're too optimistic and too happy, you can kind of be unaware of the risks, you know? You don't see the danger looming in the horizon. There's something to enjoying yourself, and there's also something to being vigilant, and the key is balance. But then Katara turns it on top and says, it's because you're trying to rebel against your parents who are overly controlling. And there probably is something to that as well. This also is about balance because Toph is being reactionary. She came from this very stifling environment and so now she's way out in the other extreme where she wants to do whatever she wants and nobody can tell her what to do. The easy mistake to make is when you rebel against others, you somehow think you're being free, but actually that's also reactionary. You're still not in your own hands. You're still just running counter to someone else's wishes, someone else's actions. Speaking of money, I'm off to spend <laughs> some. See you guys later. Wow. Look at Sokka being the healthiest one. It's good not to get dragged along on the roller coaster ride of other people's emotions. It's good just to like do your own thing and enjoy yourself. My name's Sokka and I'm right, your new owner. Who's got pretty feathers? Is it a wanted poster? <laughs> I found something that you're not gonna like. She can't well, see it. It sounds like a sheet of paper, but I guess <laughs> you're referring to what's on the sheet of paper. I'm finally not getting caught by the blind moments. A wanted poster! That's so great! That's funny because that was my exact reaction when Aang saw the wanted poster of himself. I would totally take a wanted poster of myself and I would keep it forever. I so would. It's so cool. Does it look good? Looks great. Well, yeah, actually, it does look pretty good. Now you have plenty of money to help with the invasion plan. <laughs> I like how she's just trying to buy everyone off in all these arguments. Here's some money to shut up. <laughs> Tell me you didn't buy a bird. Now we can send messages all over the world. Wow, how does it work? Hmm. Uh, make nice! Bad hockey! Maybe he's mad you named him hockey. Did she just soup bend? <laughs> what's this? I don't know! I mean, seriously, what's with you people? Yeah, come on, get it together. Are you proud of this? 
This is one of those moments where they're not fighting about the actual thing. They're fighting about their emotions, disguised as the thing. Top doesn't want to back down because she's proud and she doesn't want to let Katara win. Katara is technically right that she's putting the group in danger, but it's not only about that for her. It's also about her fear and her desire to have Toph be in line with, the, with what she feels are the group's values and morals. They both can sense that, so they don't want to back down, and so they're ignoring the situation. It's a powder keg. It doesn't matter where I got it. The fact is, you went through my stuff. Don't you walk away from me while I'm talking to you. Or what are you going to do? Send me to my room? I wish I could. You're not my mom, and you're not their mom. I never said I was. No, but you certainly act like it. You think it's your job to boss everyone around, but it's not. So stop acting like you can tell me what to do. Whoa, I can't believe this. Well, I... Stop rubbing your eye and speak clearly when you talk. This is crazy. I didn't think that they were going to be this direct about it. I should expect it by now. But yeah, this is something I've thought for a long time about Katara. She's very maternal, and that is a great thing most of the time. But the negative side of that, when it hits its extreme, is that it comes off as controlling and, and bossiness. It comes from a desire to protect, which is a great thing, but it sometimes ends up being colored by fear in a way that is disconnected from reality and from what is actually healthy in the situation. But the bad thing about being on the top side and being that proud is you feel so strongly about not being pushed down upon that you will ignore the right thing and you'll act irrationally because it's so painful for you to feel like someone has controlled you or has dominated you. You can be blinded by that feeling. They're both not being reasonable in certain ways because of certain extremes of their personality. I know, Hockey. Why can't they just get along? Look at Sokka being the happiest one. <laughs> it's nice. I've got an idea. Always the strategist. I'm gonna send a note to Katara and say it's from Top who wants to apologize. Then everyone will be friends again. Nope, not how that works. Oh, by the way, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Aang's hair. He's getting a little, like, back thing going. You brought me out here to tell me your sister's not as annoying as I make her out to be? Nah, she's pretty much a pain. <laughs> I rely on it. I don't understand. When our mom died, mm. she helped fill the void that was left by our mom. Yeah, so I don't want to sound like I'm being too harsh on Katara. It's understandable, and she's doing the best she can, and she's a teenager. And she, in a way, has been put in the role of being, ha having to take care of everyone. And she's gotten the group through so much. It's just that, you know, any of your good traits, if you place too much faith in them to get you through every situation, they're going to fail you eventually. It really seems like my whole life, Katara's been the one looking out for me. That's a terrible burden, as a teenager. As anyone, as a young person. That's not always a bad thing. She's compassionate and kind, and she actually cares about me. That's more than my own mom. Yeah, good. I'm glad the top can see that. But in the heat of the moment, you're not going to allow for that. Zaka, I mean, this is a good plan. This is a much better plan than the bird, bird thing. I want to... Katara, stop. You don't need to apologize. I was going to say I want to pull a scam with you. <laughs> what? Cool. The ultimate scam. I like that. That's badass. Not condoning the scam thing, but like, it takes guts to just like plunge into your fear like that. So I'm gonna turn you in and collect the reward. Oh, so I was right. You betrayed me! The right thing is its own reward. I still want the actual reward. <laughs> of course. There's gonna be some trouble. It's never that easy. Guitar's suspicions will be confirmed. Uh-oh. Hey, what kind of cell is this? A wooden one. It's a trap. That's her. That's the girl you were looking for. It's a trap, no! <laughs> Yikes. And now they're going to be used as bait. Appa's in charge. We haven't gotten a lot of Appa recently. Season 2 was all Appa all the time, and then ever since Appa's Day Off... That's not what that episode is called. Appa's Lost Days <laughs> is what I meant to say. He's been kind of quiet. I wanted to show you that I can have fun too. You are fun. I was really mad when you said that because... Well, because maybe it's true. I love these two together. They're so nice. They have such different but complementary personalities. It's just a lot of fun putting them together. And it's so heartwarming when they get along because they're both really good people. It's just that they each represent something the other has to explore about themselves. And so that creates conflict. It's amazing how in these arguments you can be right and wrong about so many different things at the same time. Like, Katara was right and she was wrong, and Toph was right and she was wrong. I feel like this is true of so many arguments. People are kind of talking past each other, or they're, they're both talking about different things. Or the thing they're saying is not really what they're saying. There's so much hidden meaning in the arguments that we have. And a lot of times it's largely hidden to ourselves. And I think the only way through that is to not double down on it. Like, not be that stubborn person who wants to protect yourself and your, your own view at any cost even if it means destroying people around you or not taking in the good lessons that, that people have about you. Saka, watch out. Ah! Nice. Good job censoring that. Sparky, sparky, boom man. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to think that name doesn't quite fit. I wish we had some earth or water. We need bendables. Are we going to sweat bend right now? 
Wow. Um, Katara? <laughs> I started the episode doing that. It was foreshadowing. It's a lot of sweat, though. Is that frozen sweat water? Oh! Right in the third eye. Oh, nice job, Top. Wow. She's the greatest. I want to send a letter to my parents. I'll be happy to help. Go, Hockey, go. Hey, where'd Hockey go? <laughs> oh, I love that episode. I feel so connected to these character episodes. They're so good. And I identify with, with all of them. But some of them more than others, for sure. All right, let's do the next one. The Puppet Master. Yeah! She's always watching. A snowstorm buried the whole village. She heard a voice. It's so cold, and I can't get warm. Mom turned and saw Nini standing by the fire. Like little Nini is still trying to get warm. Creepy. Guys, did you hear that? I hear people under the mountain, and they're screaming. What, are they trapped in a mine or something? Hello, children. <laughs> I have an inn nearby. It's made of candy. <laughs> people have been disappearing in those woods you were camping in. When the moon turns full. People walk in, and they don't come out. Who wants more tea? Yeah. That Hama seems a little strange. A little? She kind of reminds me of Grand Grand. The cabbage is a woman. I think I'm just creeped out by the episode, so I'm just seeing things. I'm gonna take a look around. Nosy Sokka. <laughs> Are those the missing people? My dude just picked a lock with a sword. Oh, very clever. This is crazy. I'm leaving. Yeah, you guys really crossed the line here. I'll tell you what's in the box. How embarrassing. It's the last thing I own from growing up in the Southern Water Tribe. I bought all this food today so I could fix you a big water tribe Aww. dinner. I'm sorry we were sneaking around. Apology accepted. That's nice. What were the marionettes though? That, doesn't, that wasn't explained. I think those are the people in the woods that went missing. More soup bending. You're a water bender. Did you know you can even pour water out of thin air? There's water in places you never think about. That's true. There is water everywhere. They're just flowers. When you're a water bender in a strange land, you do what you must to survive. Huh, a little dark tint. So I don't know how this episode will turn out yet, but I do know that she's doing something dark. And that was a really nice way of showing that with her blackening the flowers and saying that it's important to do whatever it takes. That added a lot with very little. Two master waterbenders beneath a full moon? I don't think we have anything to worry about. She's not draining the blood from her enemies, is she? That would be awesome. Just felt something come over me like I was possessed. I tried to fight it, but I couldn't control my own limbs. And I looked up the, at the puppet moon. master. Oh my god, that's sick. That's creepy as hell. Ugh. For generations, it has blessed waterbenders with its glow, allowing us to do incredible things. Blood bending. Blood bending. Enforcing your own will over theirs. That's so cool, but horrible. My cell unlocked by the very guards assigned to keep me in. I bet it would be a lot more gory if this wasn't aimed at kids as the primary demographic. I don't know if I want that kind of power. We have to fight these people whenever we can, with any means necessary. You know who she reminds me of? She reminds me of Jet. They have a similar way of thinking about things where they have kind of gotten lost in revenge. They're under the false idea that their actions are justified because they've been wronged. And past injustices justify current injustices. It doesn't seem to be rooted in any practical desire to win the war or to help her kind. It just seems like pure anger, pure revenge. I also don't like the by any means necessary idea. You end up being the same thing as the people you're fighting against. They deserve the same. You must carry on my work. I won't use bloodbending, and I won't allow you to keep terrorizing this town! Good for you. Oh no. I control every muscle, every vein in your body. Yua, help me. Oh, she's doing it. Your technique is useless on me. Wow. But she did steal that flower technique, though. Waterbending is just the deadliest, like, the deadliest one. Judging by Katara and this lady. You're outnumbered. No. You've outnumbered yourself. Oh no! Don't let them hurt each other. No! Oh no, she's bloodbending. You're a bloodbender. 
Yeah, she did get her to turn. She used the dark side of the force for a second there. Wow, crazy. Why are the dark arts so appealing? In some ways it's symbolic of getting the things you want and pleasing yourself. It definitely would feel good on some level to indulge our, our dark fantasies, you know? There are things that we want instinctively. If we're being really selfish, it would be really fun to explore those things. Like revenge is one of them. Revenge is a fantasy that just feels so good to explore in your mind because it just takes away all the hard work and it just gives you that feeling of power and glory and satisfaction and returning yourself to stature in your mental hierarchy against someone who's wronged you. It just feels amazing to think about that. And so I think dark arts in some sense are a reflection of that feeling of wanting to have power over others and, and the excitement of doing it secretly and getting away with it. But obviously the reason why they're dark arts is because it corrupts you and it ends up being something that is not sustainable. You end up doing more harm than good and you end up getting lost in those feelings and missing the larger picture and you end up becoming the evil, which is exactly what happened with Hama. And Hama was the perfect choice to represent the struggle and the desire for revenge and to be corruptible because she got there in a way we can understand. Like she was victimized and it's easy to imagine how you can fall into the clutches of evil in that situation. I also think it's interesting Guitar got a taste of that because now that's something she has to reckon with. She knows she has that ability. Will she be able to avoid it? That's the classic light side, dark side struggle. You know, you have all this power you could use. Are your principles strong enough not to use it? Do you really care more about your ethics than about the results? That's very challenging. It's maybe easy to live those morals most of the time, but everybody has moments where they slip. And in those moments, what do you do? Does the dark side come out? Do you give in to the, the revenge, the darkness? Do you use the bloodbending? For a lot of people, the answer is yes. All right, wow, dark episode. That felt like a Halloween special. Did that come out in October? As always, thank you for watching, and I look forward to next time.